Welcome to another episode of the B-Files. I'm beautiful Brad. Cody Cuteness. Stephanie. Chester. Michael Benjamin. So we've dug deep and we fought through all the fucking fog to bring you the newest conspiracy theories and bumps and ghouls and goblins. That I'm looking over my shoulder. I don't know. It's eerie as shit out here. We're currently sitting in my roommate's backyard. Thunder's rolling in. I, I feel Fuck. like I feel like just saying these things could get us in a lot of trouble. It's a good thing some of us did cocaine because I can't sleep tonight. We could end up in Guantanamo taking things in the ass. I don't Is want that. that. <laughs> Generally speaking. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the newest edition of P-Files. Uh, this week, we're going to dive into some fucking heinous shit. Uh, so, what do we have for this episode It's been a while since we've done a P-Files. So, can we remind, remind the booze heads what a P-Files is? Well, if they're booze head, they should know what a P file. That's is. true. If they're Ooh. if they're if they're dedicated booze heads, Actually, they should know what the P really file. Actually, dedicated, that means that they're probably really drunk and can't remember what the P file. That's is. a ah. good call out. Yeah, yeah. Because if, 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 yeah. if they're Two dedicated, times. they're following the the guy party commandments. But, but did we and cover it beers deep in life. our garbage intro? Like, didn't I say like things that go bump in the night? The fucking heinous acts of weird. Did we, did we do an intro for P-Files, like, uh, the last time? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, we did. All right. I'm pretty sure we did. So we're opening P- up the books for so the P-Files. P-Files. P- our, our P-Files are our conspiracy theories. And, and we, horror stories. And horror stories, yes. And ghouls and goblins. And creepy, creepy shit. Not like child molester creepy, but like... Scary movie Sleeping creepy. Sleeping with the lights on creepy. All right, so um, let's get into it. What do you got for the P-Files? Did that just happen? <laughs> a fucking gaze literally <laughs> just picked up a page from the P-Files and threw it at Cuddly. The haunted backyard. <laughs> what page, though? Well, Page 666. <laughs> me being as morbid as I am, I thought that we could talk about human experimentation today. Tell us more. So, I uh, was looking up topics on, like, the worst ones, like, the bad of the bad of the bad of human experimentation. And uh, it's not just other countries. America did it, too. So, I wanted to talk about the mustard gas experiment. It was with the U.S. Army, and they tested on their own soldiers. And it was to test the effects of mustard gas on otherwise healthy young men. The gas actually was a sticky, oily resin that caused chemical burns on exposed skin. And uncontrollable bleeding in the in the lungs when it was inhaled, and probably why the army didn't bother to ask consent from the soldiers it exposed to in Panama in 1942. So this is World War Two shit. Yes. Because I know in World War One they were, I think that like World War One was like the first war where they were experimenting with chemical warfare, right? Well, yeah. Basically, what they were anticipating that everybody was going to use chemical warfare. So they just didn't even get permission from soldiers and just started testing on everybody. I'm not trying to take this story from you, but I really feel like I need to give you more of the backstory to that, that I didn't realize that's what you were talking about. I know, I just saying, I know clearly that you were going to bring this up because I actually, there was this, back in that same time, the U.S. was actually going down with other countries that technically hadn't uh, claimed Antarctica or anything like that yet, and... Apparently, there I forget what the ad, the admiral or the general's name was. It was it was an admiral or something uh, who actually ended up, was on some TV show uh, or a late show uh, talk show host in the fifties. Actually, it was in the sixties talking about like things that he had seen down there that he couldn't talk about. From what has been rumored around everywhere, what you were just saying about the whole like human you know experimentation you know that they were not just the U.S. but other countries and the U.S. were taking oh. bodies down to the Antarctica and making sure they would stay there and actually trying to do other tests down there so that they knew no one could track them anywhere. Well, that was actually a separate test because this one was actually the effects of mustard gas 
and tropical climates. They tested it everywhere, in every oh, I'm way. I'm sure they did. I'm just saying Antarctica, they, they, they took all their, their, tropical their climates, leftovers or their, deserts, like, you know, their, their evidence down there because no one would go down there. And all the other countries down there, they were fighting over it. And then for some reason... They all agreed, you know, to not go down there that much until they come to agreement that they all could go down there together, like, like 30 years later. It was Are really those weird. Are things related? I mean, it's human experience. No, it really is, because back in the exact same time, in 1942, you said, right? Sanctioned by the U.S. government? Yeah, it, it, I'm telling you, it's fucking, it's insane. When I was, I'll, I'll, well, I got into these YouTube videos that were way too crazy, these people in these comments, and I was like, eh, I'll give it a shot and just listen and watch, and it was, I don't believe any of it, but it's still fucking crazy. No, actually, you know? it is legit. In 1942, oh, I'm not saying that those the War human, Department those really created happen, the I'm Biological Warfare Department. Like, it was a legitimate department. Well, yeah, don't they still have that going on to this day? I'm sure they do. Uh, Probably. Michael seems really uh, really passionate about this. Because that Admiral dude really was not wanting to say like so, more about Antarctica, and it was really... So I'm going to do my little side, uh, my own side conspiracy here. We, we've been looking at a lot of uh, conspiracies, and a lot of them have to deal with celebrities being immortal. Is it possible that Michael Benjamin is immortal? Absolutely. If there was any kind of, uh, you know, warfare that involved chemicals, he would definitely be like a cockroach, and I don't know why he's worried. That's true. Like, he would be like the lone survivor. Like, 15 dudes be dead laying on the floor, and Michael Benjamin would just be sitting there with a smile. Everybody's dead, but Michael Benjamin lives forever. Oh he, he's God. immune to chemical warfare. I'm pleading the fifth right now. <laughs> I know it's not a court of law, but I'm going to treat it like one for my own safety and yours, too. All right, well, let's get back to the uh, the tropical fucking warfare. What, what's going on down there? Yeah, go into and, more detail. And this is, like, did. during World War II, has America been involved yet? Um, I'm not sure. Um, they uh, took the soldiers out to an island uh, in the Pacific. There was about, uh, it looks like, about 1,200 recruits. Uh, they tested in small teams for several weeks. They were ordered to strip waist down in wooden chambers on base grounds then sent inside and doused with a chemical agent. It turns out the mustard gas works really well in tropical heat. <laughs> I'd say so. Makes that shit faster. According to one survivor, all of the men began writhing around and screaming in pain as the chemical burned through their skin. Some pounded on the walls and demanded to be let out, though the doors were locked and only open when the time was up. Though the men were treated immediately following the experiment, they were threatened with military prison if they ever disclosed what had happened to anyone, including their own doctors later in life. When the story finally broke in 1993, more than 50 years after the test, only a few survivors could be located for compensation. The Pentagon is still officially, quote-unquote, looking for survivors the youngest of whom would now be 93 years old. Why did they have to strip waist down? Because it was uh, it affected the skin. They wanted to test the effects of the, of the agent on the skin as well. And the genitals. Mostly the genitals. So, genitals. So, yeah, they, yeah. They, they were willing to burn <laughs> these dongs. men severely, but not burn their dicks. <laughs> oh. I mean, you got to appreciate that. Oh, such that. compassion. Ooh, such compassion and mercy. Because you wouldn't see, if you're wearing pants, you wouldn't see, but like a shirt you would have off every now and then, you know? Like, that's probably the most... Like, oh, yeah. Well, what would you imagine, like, having a cock like that fucking presented to you like crispy crispy <laughs> have you I'm ever boy. seen uh planet terror the the the, the, the that grindhouse movie oh yes. yeah. yeah do you remember when quentin tarantino like had like that melty cock that he was trying to put in that girl's pussy yes <laughs> and it was like melting to pieces as he was trying to fuck her that's panama 1942 <laughs> yep. melty cocks everywhere that's man. where they got the melty cock concept. that's where gonorrhea came from <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's probably true. I wouldn't pass. I wouldn't put it past uh, uh, Tarantino because him and Rodriguez both get most of their stories from true shit that's happening in the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they just make it go extreme. P files, motherfucker. Everything Fuck we talk yeah. about's true. Everything we talk about's true and 100%. extreme because that's how you live life. <laughs> true and extreme. But about the biological warfare department, um, it was a recommendation by President Roosevelt and created America's first biological warfare bureau officially the study of the country's vulnerabilities and devise an appropriate response should japan germany or later the soviet union ever get the idea to spray some germs around the u.s unfortunately the bureau's method of assessing vulnerability was covertly attack vulnerabilities with germ warfare of its own in a period lasting 20 years i can't believe this a period 20 years guys <laughs> <laughs> no i would never want that from 1949 that to 1969 well-intentioned well-intentioned my ass 
officials. I lost my place here. So even uh, the, the thing that like strikes me about that is that in World War II, they were looking at the Soviet Union as a potential enemy, even though they were our allies at the time. Oh, absolutely. I, like I uh, After World War II, after um, we beat the Germans, Patton was like, let's take these troops and fucking roll right into Russia. Even yeah. though Hitler tried that shit and failed like a well, motherfucker. Yeah, but he's like, <laughs> while we're over here, these motherfuckers are going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. But we everyone already... called Patton crazy. Like, no, man, no, we're good because we got that. Well, it was uh, uh, Winston Churchill... Uh, FDR and who was the uh, Russian dude? You're thinking of um. Well, no, it was during World yeah. War II. It's not Stalin, is it? Yeah. Stalin, yeah, it was yeah, Stalin. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stalin. We weren't friends. We only made that type of deal at that moment because well, we had because they had to. And I think they were just so exhausted after World War II. They're like, nah. But Patton was right, and then we went into the Cold War shortly after. Yeah, That's some Rasputin right. bullshit. Yeah, Rasputin, Rasputin was Rasputin. the man. <laughs> <laughs> Rasputin forever. Motherfucker had a 12-inch cock. <laughs> Hang on. Display. Yeah. Isn't it displayed what? somewhere? It, it is on display. Did not. Yes. Absolutely. Is it, um, Google that shit. It's was on it display. Wasn't Rasputin Hold rumored Hold to be wait. immortal? Yeah, he was like a mystic yeah, in Russia. Yeah, that's why they made that, those movies and those books all about him and shit. So. And he was on ty- a typo fucking uh, album. <laughs> Michael might wait, be but Wait, hold on. Go back to the 12-inch dick thing. Did he really have a 12-inch dick? Yeah. Dude, yes. like that was half of his like. Man, war. if it wasn't for the twelve inch stick, I'd say he... maybe Michael could be Rasputin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's only working. Remember, I go, I go. He uh... runs over black boys and has a small penis. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Oh, your stand up bit on a. Uh, Did what? you already forget your own stand up bit? <laughs> <laughs> Running over black kids and like fucking having a small dick. I mean, I have a small dick. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know you knew that, but. You Maybe did all stand literally up about it. Did <laughs> stand up that you won't you remember. Do stand up. I want to do a stand up. What was no, it? This was last week's it was, episode. The, it was like the you intro. You recorded it yourself <laughs> on your own phone. <laughs> you don't remember? And then made you, us listen to it. Are you serious right now? Several times. How fucked up were you, MB? <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I really. I mean. This is some subconscious was it racist shit. Was no. it funny? No. It wasn't funny. Your subconscious. It was one of those like it, it made me laugh because it was so awkward. But if I was like, <laughs> if, I, if I was listening with somebody else, I would have felt uncomfortable. <laughs> you make people well, feel uncomfortable. <laughs> maybe I should look at my phone and try to find whatever you guys are talking about. Well, well, we'll I kind of want to go through your phone now. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe we should go through it together and have an old episode about it. All right, so anyway, back to the P files. I mean, this shit's getting interesting. <laughs> One of the earliest, more than 200 tests took place in September 1950 when the U.S. Navy ship near San Francisco hoisted a fire hose and sprayed tons of bacteria into a bank of fog that was drifting over the city. Lady gov- letter- later, government officials checked in with the local hospitals to see how many people had been infected. It turned out to be thousands, and one of them had actually died as a result of the human experiment. So they're just, like, pumping shit into fog clouds and just letting it roll into so, cities. So, not, not, not to offshoot, but isn't there a uh, conspiracy theory about planes, like jet, like like normal, like, uh, commercial jets that, like, the spread chemicals chem- oh, chem- yeah. chem- and chem- chemtrails? Chem- yeah. Chem- yeah. Chem- yeah. 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 But that's not been proven. But this is. Well, yeah, and that so is. so if well, they're not afraid to do this, what else I know. are they not well, I'm not saying that it's not an... I'm not saying that they can't do it. It's like the chemtrail of tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's all still designed at, like, Native Americans. <laughs> why does that make They're me, not going to be satisfied until they wipe them out. Why, why, <laughs> that is funny. But why is it when uh, cuteness over here says uh, cootie things about uh, chemtrail tears, I just hear cum trail tears? Because that's all, that's, that's all he does is... Trail, because you think tears. poor little cuddly is a one no gay guy. He is very deep. There are many layers of cuddly. There is Look layers of cum. So, Not just common wieners. So I deep. Don't know about that. <laughs> so deep. I'm telling you. There's more to cuddly than just sucking a cock. Well, where am I going to see this? An deepness, infected cock. This uh, philosophical whatever you're talking Maybe about. Maybe it's of because him. you're so awkward. Because he shows I'm it to awkward. Me. I think he's the awkward Shut up. One. I'm about to have some biological warfare on your ass. <laughs> In your ass. Is that him talking about cum again? Maybe he's got like some passed down genes from fucking he can't uh, fit in my this jeans. experiment and he's going to straight shove it in your butthole and it's all over his cock. I don't right want now. whatever his genes got left over on it from whatever night he had fun with and little boys he did stuff with last night. Have you ever teabagged him in his sleep? Uh, no. 
but we can make that happen. Cuddly pleads the fifth. <laughs> we're, we're saving that for the extra content. I never did it. <laughs> <laughs> for the Patreon. Patreon, page. Patreon, Patreon. I, I, it's funny you bring up teabagging. I remember, remember all, dude, I don't know about you guys, remember back in high school, all the fuckers were, you know, it never happened to me and I never did anyone, but fucking everyone was always saying, I'm going to fucking teabag you and they'd fuck around with someone and everyone would be so fucking scared, you know, and they're like, no, don't do it. Yeah, you, man. You never knew, if, you know, and then when it was going to happen. I mean, who and I've seen, so, I've seen someone I fucking do it to someone. Exciting. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, dick? It was teabagging, or what was the movie where the dude would, like, stretch out his balls and it was a bat wing and the brain and... <laughs> Oh uh, shit, you're talking about waiting, waiting. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was the, I saw Dude. every dude's balls oh I went to God. high school with because that, that fucking movie. movie. That movie I, I did like that. show my balls a lot in the form of what they called the goat. The goat. Yeah. Oh, well, well, well speaking that was of the balls, one. I mean, you, you ran through the drunken army era. How many fucking cocks did you see during that time? I mean, dozens. <laughs> dozens. <laughs> Not dozens. a couple. So, Boo says the, the drunken army. Of goats, bat if, wings, if, if, oh, yeah. The predecessor? It, so Guy like Party is basically the predecessor of the Drunken Army. No, no, no the way around. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Guy Party is the successor. The Guy Party is the successor of the Drunken Army. The Drunken Army was just a bunch of fucking dudes that had... Stamina. Mostly dudes. Stamina. <laughs> mostly dudes. <laughs> yeah, well, was there many girls? Well, uh, there was girls. There was me. All right, so there was like three girls and... 30 dudes deep, man. And all we did <laughs> was show so, your Sounds like the craziest porn I've ever seen. <laughs> 30 dudes <laughs> showing their dicks to three chicks. <laughs> yeah, and all those girls were like girlfriends or married. Not so. me! <laughs> oh my god. What was I'm your the, name the in, the, in the DA? This. I was Major Herpes. As Nurse Hot Ass. <laughs> um, I, I don't think Chester got one. I was just always Chester. <laughs> Uh, yeah, why mess with that? Right. Uh, Bing bong. Yeah. Bing bong. My, uh, Captain Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the P files. Yeah. All right. All right, to get more data on how biological attack might spread, project planners dusted rural areas with pot- potentially carcinogenic cadmium, including several schools in Minneapolis. Because, you know, we just got to attack them kids to find well, out how shit works. Is cadmium, like, special K? like uh, Cadmium. Cadmium. Oh, okay. Well, That's uh, ketamine. Ketamine, yeah. Ketamine. 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 I mean, though, I like your, your word reference there with drugs. That was great. Wow. Wait a second. So this was being done, and you said Minneapolis? Yes. At several schools in Minneapolis. Was it Minneapolis oh, close fuck. to Canada? So if, like, the gas is fucking went over, it would have went to Canada. I'm not sure because this was carcinogenic Are you trying cadmium. to make it seem like it's okay? No, not at all. I'm <laughs> no. just trying to I'm trying to figure out why they did it in Minneapolis. That's what it's I was not down to too. I well, thought, I was giving I, you That's why I was surprised. I was you giving you Canada. my reasoning. Okay. Yeah, it could be that it could be that that's one of like the most northern points in the country. Yeah, so they were trying to test like a cold environment. Well, that could or be they're too. just unfeeling yeah. dicks and they were just throwing darts at the map. Like, we're going to fuck them up are today. They, are they just Actually, wanted to min- experiment on a shriveled dick? Minneapolis is pretty useless, so... Yeah. I, I mean, they could have just been like, what, co- what, what Tell city matters? Tell that to the little innocent kids in Minneapolis. Yeah. Wasn't Hoover, like, the fucking director of CIA back in there in this time? Hoover was uh, the This is 30s. the War Department. Oh. I thought Hoover was the one that created the FBI. J. Edgar yeah, Hoover, yeah. FBI, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was like... Um, Not CIA. Uh, Luciano and all those yeah, motherfuckers. That's yeah. right. I was thinking of yeah. Well, but they, like, do you, do you really? I mean, like, we're talking about shit that happened in like the fifties and sixties. Mm-hmm. Do you really doubt that this shit is re- even stopped? Like, absolutely not. Not not at all. They yeah. just got better at covering it up because yeah. they went with a cover story of the military experiencing with. Shrouding cities in smoke screens in case of nuclear attacks. So they would poison these fucking cities and then say that they were doing it because they were practicing for nuclear attacks. Jeez. So do you feel like it's ethical? Wait. No. Wait a second. Not at all. No. But, so, but they made let me like put it this way. Drills, so it, it was okay. It, if you didn't control the population, is like, is there a possibility that the population would just go so out of control that it could destroy the race? But this isn't no. population control. This is research. This is torture. What you're saying is yes. They're but what I'm what I'm what I'm science. saying is that they're trying to that this kind of shit could happen today, not as research. Well, probably as research too, but also as just population control. Yeah, and that's what he's saying. Yeah. We to, need to. To, 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 to. I mean, to make isn't us to make is? us. 
Yeah. Um, at, at, and, and diabetes and heart disease and everything <clears throat> else we do to ourselves that is funded by corporations that are well, allowed to just be like, okay, guess what? You know, kids have it's all like this neuter stuff. us they, essentially to make us mellow. Yeah, they they didn't. I mean, back in the day, you didn't really have a lot of diabetes, cancer. So I guess. They found a new way to fucking get at us. I found a new way, too. It's called gay sex. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it really helps control this, your population. So you, you're <laughs> I, 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 and when I said population control, I meant, like, like keeping us from, like, going crazy. Yeah. You but, but you're talking about, like, actually controlling the number. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, because, I mean, like, we're at, like, 7 bill, billion now. Right. Like, I think they say we're going to hit 15 billion by 2050. Like, yeah. I mean, granted, I probably won't still be alive, but um, you could be still alive. Yeah, maybe. But like, how does Earth sustain 15 or 15? Are you billion trying to high five a ghost? <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> anyway, how are they even? Well, so if Michael were to survive, it could be like the Rasputin thing, where he's like preserved. Oh, yes, Michael <laughs> Benjamin is. I believe he's immoral. Oh, I, yeah. I have no doubt he's going to end up parts of him in a glass jar. <laughs> <laughs> Some of him in petri dishes. No, yeah. you really want to know my dream, though, of being immoral is being some type of, you know, transference of my consciousness or whatever they're able to do sometime in the future. Robot and body. my whole me being a goddamn cyborg, I would fucking If, su- if, if that's, I could sign up for it right now, I'd be like, dream, I would do it. I then would my do it. future dream is to screen people that deserve to have their consciousness transferred into the future. <laughs> And buddy, you ain't making my list. Too soon. Michael but Michael, the only list you made was Jeffrey Dahmer's. <laughs> what? I don't even understand that. Just how go did I, with it. How did, my, I, how did, I, how did I make Jeffrey yeah, Dahmer's wish? Just go with it. Freezer for one. Freezer oh, for one. Because being in a jar and all my body parts. So. Well, um, okay. yeah. Can I'm you delicious. imagine like Michael being like uploaded into a computer and you walk into the building? Transcendence. Like, yeah. Oh, transcendence. Do you remember? Um, hello, I'm movie. Michael Benjamin. <laughs> do you remember Captain America: Winter Soldier? When like that dude from like uh, that was like in the first Captain America was like all in the computer. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be fucking great. Yeah. Get you're Wait, going to like work every day, and Michael mentions, "Welcome to work. It's Monday morning. <laughs> you want to hear something so when cool?" If I was everywhere like that, I'd kill myself. Exactly. It, it, <laughs> it, it just like like the Michael Benjamin program just can like frequently and that's how like we upload yeah. like YouTube videos of like garbage and like shit like that. We literally just figured out population control. Plug Michael Benjamin to every fucking computer. It's what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's been, it's been part of what I've been saying the whole time and what I've been trying to say the whole time is that advertising and in marketing, as much as I really like it and I don't want to say it's an immoral thing, that's where it's all started for population control from the 50s. And well, once it started, and every, they were able to get like really good at it and technology got better yeah. too. Seriously. Like being able to help control people into getting what they I, want. I, I wouldn't. Because before that time period, they didn't know it was only just word of mouth, just person to person. I, I wouldn't say, like, advertisements created population control. I think advertisements created the population boom. It makes everyone think, like, let's have a happy family. Consume, consume, consume. Exactly. And built expectations that people felt they had to have. Exactly, yes. Yeah. The Joneses, that theory. That, that is what advertisements do. I hate do. the Joneses. The whole keeping well, up with the Joneses lifestyle. That's advertisements, yes. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, That's what I'm saying. I'm, it doesn't have to be advertised like that. It should be marketing towards what you deserve or, or what you need in life. Not about what you, you know, forcing you to think you need. You know, that's, that's what that's what the that's what the key is, and then that's where everything else comes in play: bad uh, food decisions, uh, and other ill, uh, healthy thing, or whatever, or bad car decisions, or house decisions, bad money decisions. Because you living think above you need their it. means, yeah. exactly, living above your means. Everybody feels like they have to live above their means. Yeah, and yeah. it's what advertisements create for it. It might even be above your means. It may just be something you just felt like you had to try because hey, the hey, Joneses are trying. Have it. you ever sat down and watched a show? Other than Trailer Park Boys, where people, like, <laughs> you know, live nope, normally. No, it's always the big $250,000 house. They got the fucking Oh, shit, even family. shows where, like, the family's supposed to be poor, like Roseanne. Yeah, and, and, oh, yeah. And, fu- and fucking um, Married with Children. Yeah, the poor household, yeah. It's, it's, it's still a two-story house. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Show the true shack that I lived in for five years of my life when I was a child until my parents were able to save enough money to buy a house. Michael, they, they already made your movie. It was called Precious. <laughs> okay, I guess I guess I'll be uh, precious. I mean, 
Michael's just a poor black girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, give me that Twinkie. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I mean, they, that would be awesome if the TV shows really did do that. Like you said, Roseanne and T- Mary Patron were two perfect examples. Rose- oh. Roseanne's supposed to be I poor. I think the closest yeah. but they Grace Under more Fire. Bedrooms. I they have a nice, nice, they have a decent house. Grace Under Fire, yeah. Fire was good too, but they had so many bedrooms, and it's like. But it was I probably really lived... the closest to an actual real functioning family that I've ever seen on TV. Yeah, but my parents had me, my brother, I was just a baby. Me, my brother, uh, my sister, and my other two brothers and under a shag. Uh, cuteness, shut the hell up, or I'll <laughs> say your name. And th- we survived, and we did all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was like but moving from apartment to apartment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. yeah Chester awesome. went through you know, it. You didn't have multiple bedrooms and stuff. Fuck no. Until you eventually, you know, you, you got, your family got better or whatever, and, and, and years you later, but the Roseanne to, wasn't even that good. You have to think that. of the time, too, and how much that they were willing to put on... TV about real life stuff and hot yeah. topics at the time. Everybody in Roseanne ended up being gay, whether they were gay or not, because gay rights were a hot topic at the time. I don't know, like, like as far as apartment living is concerned, you never even see that at, yeah. ex- except Martin. for Perfect Frasier. Strangers, <laughs> Perfect shows in like major cities, like, yeah. like, in, uh, in where front. it's normal to live in a like, fucking right, apartment, right, yeah. right, right, like, like Friends or like yeah. how my mother, or, like, yeah, Frasier, you never, you never Frasier. see it in like Will and Grace. suburbia, uh, right, yeah. right. Yeah. right. <laughs> but those are like deal. those apartments are like houses and. But is it because if we watched a show about shit that really, really, really related to us, we wouldn't want to watch it? Oh, yeah, wait, I mean, because you watch Malcolm television to escape reality. Exactly. Yeah, the middle yeah. was pretty good, uh, showing what they had to really fucking deal with all the time. Yeah, with so many yeah. Kids. And having very little money. So I mean, I think like like making a show where you could relate to. I don't know. Like, I mean, Trailer Park Boys is actually a really good example yeah, of that. Sunny Philadelphia, <laughs> we can relate to that. It is, yeah. sure. <laughs> it's always sunny. Yeah, I can, right. re- I can relate to like getting hooked on crack. I can totally. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was one time. Just the other day, that damn baby got aborted. Oh, man, I don't know what we're going to do. Let's reel back into the P files. All right. In New York, in 1966, agents threw light bulbs filled with bacteria into the subway tracks to see if the whoosh of air from the trains would spread contaminants. It turns out it would. Samples dropped at 14th Street were found as far away as 59th Street Station. The bacteria, the pathogen that causes food poisoning, also coated clothes, skin, and hair of subway passengers. None of the people who were exposed knew what was going on, and nobody was ever punished for these human experiments. So they rolled it down in the New York subway? They just chucked light... Why light bulbs? How how did they get it into the light bulb? I don't know. I mean, these are... (laughs) That's something for the P-files to crack, man. Yeah, they just chuck light bulbs full of the shit down into the subways just to life. specifically <laughs> see. Is that a crack fucking pipe? <laughs> God damn it. Where's the closest <laughs> subway? <laughs> Don't smoke crack out of light bulbs. Just to see how far the air would take it. I mean, it's, it's New York. It, it doesn't fucking really matter. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> New York's probably just full of fucking goddamn... Well, that's how the AIDS epidemic... I thought that was from fucking a monkey. Yeah, that's what everyone's well, that's always. They, no one really buddy, knows though. They really don't know. By the government. Freddie Mercury. The like oh, don't mention it. So sad. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, but yeah, I mean, now that that's that's fucking crazy. I, I mean, you would think like if they wanted to test something, I, I get it that they want to test it on unsuspecting people, but. Go out to fucking, like, some ho-dunk fucking town where oh, there's dunk. ten people. The hills have eyes. Or, or yeah, Eastgate, Ohio. Fuck right. It. <laughs> it, throw it under a Biggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Remke. <laughs> a county market. Throw it into a Kmart. Nobody goes there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just fuck over the people that work at Kmart. And, yeah. and they can't get jobs anywhere else anyway, throw so they're the fucking worst of us. Yeah, so just I can get throw old stores that don't are alive anymore. I look at it like this. The subways have always been full of homeless people. Shouldn't they have just paid the homeless people, cleaned out the rest of the civilians, and then tested it on them? They would have yeah. taken the cash for it to well, get food well, poisoning. How do you feel about that, Michael? Um, they definitely would have, speaking from one of their uh, last men. Uh, yeah. All right, here's a question for Michael. Say somebody came up with you and gave you a steak. It was just food poisoning, though, And right? they're like, here's this steak, a bottle of A1, and your favorite brew. 
but I need you to pull your pants down. I'm going to gas you. Uh, on, the <laughs> on the genitals. Why are you <laughs> using your pants down to gas me? Well, apparently they gas them all in Panama with their pants down because we they That's don't know what happened there. With their shirts off. Oh. Not their pants, their oh, shirts. Oh, I thought you said oh, waist I, down. I, I kind of want like somebody to gas genitals. No, to like, the waist, waist. To the waist, she said, not waist down. Oh, oh, to be clear, I'm imagining dicks out. Waist yeah. Waist yeah. Was I the only one who heard to the waist? What does that say about us? Yeah, for real. Nice, what kind of animals are we? <laughs> Wanting fucking burning everyone's dicks off, apparently. Fucking. Okay, so I think the question, and, and I think we're sharing the same thought here, that the question is, would you take gas to the genitals for a good meal? No, I can easily find a horrible meal without genitals being harmed. Like a mediocre steak in the garbage? No, I can either find a good bacteria I can eat, what? getting fucking plenty of what I want. Well, since you, you have a small burned. penis, what if it enlarged? That's exactly why I don't want it getting burned. Enlarged your penis to eight inches, but you always have a rash. I'm not going to affect my penis. In like it's a bumpy eight around. inches. <laughs> bumpy eight inches. <laughs> Michael Benjamin is woke. He prefers that organic penis. Yeah, all right. Fair what enough. What if we just give you Rasputin's penis? No, I don't want his like weird, in the box. evil dick. Like remove his dick and <laughs> no, then no, just take like, like a fumes from the jar. That's like as a souvenir. As a, just as a souvenir. No. <laughs> I don't believe in superstitions and stuff, but I wouldn't want his bad omen, fucking evil dick. He was a mystic, man. I he was, know. He was so the I first wouldn't want woke it. I wouldn't want to be a part of him. They I couldn't. Feel that I would be. They less couldn't woke. kill that motherfucker. They tried a you, lot. Yeah, take, it would take my wokeness. It would be like no. You would be more woke. No, I don't think so. I think I would either industrial strength. Maybe you're right, yeah. but maybe, <laughs> maybe you're right. Industrial strength. Woke. Would you ingest his penis? I would penis? feel like I would be turning evil. W- would though. you eat? Would oh, you I'm eat his it. penis? No penis ingestion. Here, what what if we put it on a barbecue? No. <laughs> da, 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 a cock kebab. <laughs> Let it be known, booze heads, that Michael Benjamin will eat placenta, but not Rasputin's cock. Why the fuck would I eat? Rasputin's cock. Well, if it gave you powers, what, what, what if we like cut it up and put it on a county dog, and you wouldn't even know? Like, okay, I'm just gonna end this right now. Stop these questions. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Benjamin does not appreciate this line of questioning. I'm not gonna say yes to any of this, sir. Excuse me. I'm going to have to ask you to leave the dumpster. Stop these questions. It's done. <laughs> no, all right. Get out of my dumpster. Back please. to interviews files. over. <laughs> right, this one is where it gets real for me, and I just want to punch Wait, people to death. If only we had like a dumpster like sound like shutting real quick, and me saying, "Get out of my dumpster, please." And Michael's dumpster, like, yeah. "I want a lawyer. I'm tired of these questions. I need my lawyer." Yeah, he does not appreciate this line of questioning. <laughs> and then Oscar the Grouch comes out. <laughs> oh, I love trash. <laughs> You really should leave the singing to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to the P files. This is one that really, 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 really pisses me off. The Northern Korean experiment. Uh, there have been many reports in North Korea of human experimentation. These reports so- show human rights abuses similar to those of Nazi and Japanese human experimentations in World War II. These allegations of human rights uh, abuses are denied by the North Korean government, of course, who claim that all of these prisoners in North Korea are humanely treated. One former North Korean woman prisoner tells of 50 healthy women prisoners who were selected and given poison cabbage leaves, which all of the women had to eat despite cries of distress from those who had already eaten them. All 50 were dead after 20 minutes of vomiting and anal bleeding. Refusing to eat would have meant reprisal against them and their families. So if you didn't eat these poison fucking leaves that you knew was going to kill you, they would kill you and your fucking family. And you bleed out your ass. And you bleed out your ass. Hmm. Ass blood. A former prisoner, head of Camp 22... Describe laboratories equipped respectively for poison gas, suffocation gas, and blood experiments in which three to four people, normally a family, are the experimental subjects. After undergoing medical checks, the chambers are sealed and poison is injected through a tube while scientists observe from above through the glass. She claims to have watched one of two... Uh, One family of two, a son and a daughter, die from suffocating gas, with the parents trying to save the children by using mouth-to-mouth resuscitation for as long as they had strength. Fuck. Jesus. Yeah. So these parents are in this fucking room with their two kids, and they pump in the gas, 
and they're suffocating because of the gas. So they use their last breaths to try and pump life back into their fucking kids before they all die. They were just they were just sharing the gas back and forth and dying. <laughs> it's, it's, it was just irresponsible parenting. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're such an ass. <laughs> Oh, my God. I mean, I draw the line when they start experimenting on kids, and now I just want to, like, let's drop some fucking nukes. Have let's you ever start. experimented on some kids, Chester? Well, and that's what I've been saying the whole time. Uh, define experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I've been saying the whole time is just say fuck it and drop the nukes on them. I mean, because, you know, if, you know, our uh, great old Trump and President C.A. can be uh, Mr. having the biggest balls in the world, he needs to say fuck it and don't try to... I say let's fucking do it. Let's cause World War Three and... You want to bring it on? Let's bring it on because they Do you deserve remember it. Because well, they did fucking that deserve it. Because they fucking deserve it. Because they fucking deserve it, man. They I don't know. It. I'm not saying that like everyone deserves it, but that's fucked up, man. I don't that's think North Korea is nearly as bad as people make no. it out to Dude, be. Did you just hear the fucking story I just read? Dude, I've heard. Yeah, but the North Korean government turned it like denied it, right? So what? Of course they're gonna deny it. There was way stuff like that before even Kim Jong Un. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I. I think I think I think the Kim Jongs are a good are a good bunch. I think they're a good bunch. I think you're a lunatic for even thinking that thought. Are you serious? How many beers are in your fucking pile? Yeah, dude. Uh, those are Miller Lights. Those are only half of beers. That's true. He's not lying. Um, dude, these are full of Miller Lights. This is one beer. But I no, I, I think the Jongs are. I think they're all right, guys. The yeah, Joneses. I mean, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Went over there. What a great judge of character. And, yeah, and, yeah. and he and he and thought he they were all right. Basketball. Just because you're trying to make peace with someone doesn't mean that they are good people. It just means that you don't want the world to end. I'm not saying I want the world to end either. I just don't think that they should be allowed to be in it. I want the world to well, end. We saw the movie with Kim Jong Un. He likes Katy Perry. He seems like a small guy. I I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, Camp 22 still exists today. I right? would I would love to see the end of the world just. Because I think it would be awesome to go to heaven and be like, like everybody all are, has their like their dying story, like oh, I had cancer, and I'm like, yeah, apocalypse. What up? What? I feel like some. Are you sure you're going to heaven? Gonna... <laughs> Agreed. Are you sure? Yeah, dude. What? Just saying the Kim, the Kims or whatever are fucking nice. people. If the kids have a vote, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> the kids do not win the world. The kids, there is more kids in the world, I think, and they probably. I don't know if they would vote for you, pal. Speaking of voting, who would make it through like the day of rapture? Like, who's going to go ahead and just float up? Straight None out? of us. Uh, <laughs> I'm going, bitches. I don't have to go rapture. I'm already immoral. Remember? Well, well, turds float, right? Turds so Michael's float. obviously going on. <laughs> Actually, turds only float if you're healthy. Fucking <laughs> I'm healthy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely ridden with all kinds of disease my turds just sink right to the bottom yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all those fucking beers and tacos man streaking up toilets everywhere <laughs> that's what i did in my 20 year period <laughs> out your ass all right, so we all agree that North Korea is not as bad as everyone makes no, it out to be. No, we all agree that they're fucking useless. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say North Korea is I'm fucking useless. Sure they keep talking about peace, though. Yeah, and then I'm pretty sure I heard the other day he's fucking backing out, wanting more demands. It was just a little stunt for Trump to look good for a minute. Oh, yeah, exactly. totally, well, dude. And North Korea to look good, too. Well, yeah. Like, they could uh, ever be uh, peaceful well, assholes. Well, well, Trump needed... His because people are going to look at that and be like, oh, like Trump's a good politician. Yeah. He, he's actually like making peace with North Korea. Exactly. But, but nothing, nothing is style. happening. Nothing conspiracy is fucking theory happening. style. They're really best friends. Agreed. Oh well, oh, I absolutely oh. think I NWO, mean, uh, 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 NWO, New World Order. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying it yesterday. At work. <laughs> this is awesome New World NWO. Order we're getting into. Could you see like a new an, N- an NWO that's being orchestrated by Trump, Kim Jong Un, oh, no, and Putin? Absolutely, I could too. He's just met that's up with the, both. Or of them. Maybe, I could too. Yeah. Once, they're all, once they're all done with their political careers, they're just gonna start a fucking band. Well, <laughs> that would rule. You, the one, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> the, they're listen, the second coming no, of the listen, Beatles. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ringo. Who's yeah, Ringo? Listen, and include the Chinese uh, dude, too, Zhao Zen or whatever his name. And he's playing the piano. Uh, Kim's playing the drums. Uh, Putin's playing the bass. And Trump's the fucking lead guitarist and the singer. Yeah. Oh, well. Trump's oh, oh, the front Trump's, man. Trump's, Trump's the front Trump's man. Trump's Lennon? Trump's, are we, yeah, are we saying Tr- Trump's, Trump's John Trump's, Lennon? You know that's no. what happened. Uh, I'm going to say Putin's just the bass Trump's player. Trump's more. Well, I, I would give Trump Trump's the Ringo. Over, Trump's uh, got to be the Ringo. Trump's Ringo, right? No. I was having Kim as being well, Ringo. Who is Ringo? Kim's Ringo. No, I think it's Trump. I think it's Trump, and I think Putin is Paul McCartney, and Kim Jong-un is the fucking John Lennon. Well, no. <laughs> no, Putin's fucking Lennon, because Putin, you could just see, his eyes pierce you, uh, dude. Okay, so Putin is definitely <laughs> Eleanor Rigby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so Putin's fucking Lennon. I'm gonna say Trump's Paul. Um, Man, that's that's giving. I think that's giving him too much credit. All right, but but who's who's the fourth member? Let's figure out who the fourth member is, and then we'll figure out. I think the other with uh, the I she. Said, I said oh, China, China she. Chinese. Chinese. Uh, well, well, Zai, Zai Zhen or Zai she. Zhao. All right, well, Zai she. Zai Zai yeah. she. Being that I don't know him that well, I'm I'm making him Ringo. Uh, Trump is my fucking Paul, and uh, Kim Jong Un is George. All right, uh, what do you guys think? I just can't believe you say Putin. Oh uh, yeah, though. yeah, Guitars is a good he one for him because he's the fucking leader. Like, there's no Beatles without Lennon and Putin. Yeah, but I don't see Putin being. I, I, I see Putin's the mastermind behind the, the. That's what are we calling this band, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> um, Apocalypse in, Now. No, it's, yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes. Really? I love it. I have my fucking moments. I have yeah. my moments. I, I, I want to hear their single. I, yeah. want, <laughs> I want a video. Definitely. <laughs> if their single will be Fuck You, We Win. Yeah, Fuck You, We Winning. Win. Yeah, we it's win. winning. Yeah, fuck, you, we're, fuck You, We're Winning. Fuck I You, We're Winning. I with a little help from... <laughs> <laughs> On the and single just, album. You do that and it's just nukes. Yeah, just yeah. Nukes. <laughs> I get by no. with a little help yeah. from my friends. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we don't need anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need none of you fools. <laughs> with a picture of all of them in a line with getting ready to push the button. For the yeah, <laughs> That's the album cover. Yeah, you, you know how like all albums, like when they would drop the single, the one would be the main one would be on one side, and then they have a second song on it. The other song would be called "Are You Prepared for the Rapture?" Yeah, <laughs> and you have to play it backwards. <laughs> yes, we're really almost die. You're, you're going. Out <laughs> the backside of the album, you know, like the very last picture you see, is them all escaping in a yellow submarine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't know. I don't know if it should be yellow though. I feel it should be a different color, not yellow. It should be. I want. I'm wearing a yellow color. submarine shirt right now. <laughs> yeah. I literally want to change this and make it like instead of the Beatles, like the fucking like like Trump and Kim Jong, like all of them. God, I wish. I wish we could design a t shirt like that. that band now, aren't we? Oh, we're going to have to. <laughs> All right, booze heads. I mean, we're not promising it right this second, but. Uh... I could play a mean fucking tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> Michael can it's use uh, it may last be coming. Putin's dick for a drumstick. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, there would be an amazing band if you all, if like we had people dressing up as the world leaders and called it Apocalypse Now <laughs> and just sung about the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were working on something like with the jizz queers. I think Apocalypse well, Now takes fucking. Right, <laughs> right. You know the, oh, you know the song, the We queers. Are the World song, like where it sounded like it's supposed to be peaceful, but it's actually destructive about Apocalypse Now and shit. <laughs> it's all about playing the uh, fucking record backwards. It's going to be amazing. We should go fund me for music lessons. Can anybody do a good Donald voice? Please tell me someone. God, can. I, I, mine sucks. I, I, can't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't voices that well. Oh, all right. Anyway, good, I didn't want to try because I felt like I was sound retarded. On the boost. So tonight uh, we're, we're recording this and um, John McCain just passed away. We were working on a P-file case. Uh, Chester was working closely with the McCain case. There there were some interesting things going on there in the P-file. So, Chester, what was exactly going on with McCain? Well, well I got to tell you, the timing of his death is is copious. It, it's, it's interesting. It's curious. I was researching and finding that when he ran for president, he picked Sarah Palin for a reason. And it wasn't to try to win that election. Why did he pick Palin? He saw 
a host, a host for his consciousness. So he, so he knew, he knew he was dying, and he saw a politician that he could implant his consciousness into and continue on and eventually become the first woman president. Is so, this like an Antichrist kind of thing? Like he saw that she could be the Antichrist and be born into... I think he saw that she had the the, the kind of je ne sais quoi that could land her into a role as either president or eventually vice president. I think he knew that that shit wasn't going to beat Obama. Bitch, I think he bare skin dresses? <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, yes, exactly. He knew he knew her incompetence was not going to beat Obama, but he had longer plans for that shit. So. His connection with her was set up so that he could implant his mind, his experiences into her, become her, and then eventually lead us all. So, and, and I know, but, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you have questions. Let's hear yeah, it. So, I have all the answers. Wait, so you mean to tell me, this straight up sounds like some get out shit to me that completely goes from... Him going to Palin and then see knowing that good that women being in the future to progress that, you know, she may be one of those potential people that can be, you know, in as a leader. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're really saying? What I'm saying is that he recognized that she had the ability to become, albeit the lack of intelligence, she had the ability to become... A, a, a potential high-ranking leader, potentially president, and while she lacked intelligence, he figured if he might, if he melded himself into her, like if, a mind meld, like a mind meld, if he if he spocked himself into her, <laughs> spocked, <laughs> and, and his brain was in her body, like a Freaky Friday kind of well, situation. Saying, like, get out, like the movie Get Out, right? That he could, if if he were controlling her body. He could make her the first woman president. And I think when Hillary ran in 2016, he said, no, no, Sarah's going to, Sarah, as me controlling her, is going to be the first woman president. I think he sabotaged that election. I think he was the one that colluded with the Russians to make sure that Trump won because he wanted Sarah Palin to be the first woman president as him. Chester, that leaves a lot of unanswered questions. For example... If Hillary Clinton wears boxers, if uh, Bill Clinton wears briefs, and Sarah Palin wears a thong, what does John McCain wear? John McCain is fully commando because that's how <laughs> he was used to fighting in Vietnam. He, you don't have time for underwear there. When you're a prisoner of war, you don't have time for underwear. You're dick, you are dick and boss out all the time. <laughs> Fuck that. He definitely wears to pen. Hoorah! No. He mentally holds his sack up. That is correct. He he needs. He has the fortitude. He to needs be able no undergarment. That's, that's why he can go to Sarah Palin and still be a man and control shit because he takes his sack with him mentally. Is that why he gave up because he couldn't control his sack anymore because he had brain cancer? Because he knew the future. When you're all, you know, on, on medication Because and at this point, Sarah Palin is at a low. Is that why all these transgender uh, people are becoming women? Is because they know the future that women are going to lead the it's world It's not lizard again? people. It's bitches. Because th- didn't the women used to lead the world like so many 20, 30,000 years ago? Amazon style, baby. At, at the end Amazon of the day, style. women lead the fucking world. Guys don't try to get power. Guys don't try to get money. Why Why they do that is because they want pussy. The mate. They guys want... just try to party. And yes, guys. Yeah. Want... Women sounds like guy party. Yes, guy I party. promise you, you will see a more um, a, a more well spoken Sarah Palin coming out in the next couple years, trying to get back into the race. And I don't think it's going to happen in twenty twenty. I think that's that's going to be obviously Trump's going to run for re-election. I'm saying twenty twenty four, maybe twenty twenty eight if a Democrat wins in twenty twenty four. But I think Sarah Palin's going to come back, and I think she's going to be well spoken because she's got John McCain's brain, and 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 that's it, he's just controlling that body. Transcended tranny. Transcended. <laughs> Transcended tranny. As you talk about this, I see a campaign poster 
of Sarah Palin standing at the presidential podium with John McCain's shadow in the background. <laughs> yeah, Riding so. a polar bear. <laughs> Riding yeah. a polar bear. Riding a polar bear. <laughs> oh, you're right. Eating a polar bear. John McCain was a badass. I, I mean, eat a get polar a, bear. make no mistake. I mean, he was, I, while I may not have agreed with all of his politics, he was totally a badass. He would speak out against the same party, too. Oh yeah, you I'm gotta not- respect people like that because I mean, and not to get like crazy deep into the political shit, but I think more often than not, people just side with parties because they're just like whatever. I just want to stay in, pa- in, in office. I'm always on the side of party, <laughs> <laughs> right? Party party. I wish there was a party party. I think that I think we I think we need a party party in More office. Party party. All right, so we're going to wrap this up by saying goodbye to John McCain. But as far as I'm concerned, it's not goodbye. As much as hail President Palin. See you soon, Palin. See you soon, McCain. <laughs> I definitely concur. Hail uh, Palin, and let's go uh, McCain in 2020, I say. Um, you never know. So McCain can work magic very soon, but uh, R.I.P. Uh, John McCain, true American hero. R.I.P. McCain. I can't wait to see what you do in the future. Hey, hey, John McCain, you know I'll suck your dick to be vice president. I can see Russia from my backyard. Oh. All right, booze heads. Remember, if you hear a bump in the night, it's not just the wood creaking. Something weird's going on. And if you see a goblin, you really saw a goblin. It's not a Michael Benjamin Coon. <laughs> and until the next P Files. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. <laughs> All right. Party. I think we gotta Die go party. one. I really think we gotta go one. Jump on the trampoline and do lines.